So here's a real quick video on how to just create a Zoom meeting. Like say you've got a deposition in a week or two weeks, whatever it is, and you need to schedule a, a, a Zoom meeting. You need to be able to provide the details to opposing counsel, the deponent, the court reporter. Here's what you're going to do. So you're going to go to the Zoom application. And you'll go to home. You'll go to schedule. And say we want to call it um, the Barker Defendant's Deposition. And it's going to be May 12th at 11.30 a.m., and it's going to last till 2.30 p.m. We are going to want to automatically generate an uh, ID number. I don't use a personal meeting ID. I don't find it necessary. And then I require a password. That just makes it a little more uh, safe, I guess. I go ahead and click host video and participant video. And then I allow or select it to be a telephone and computer audio uh, type of meeting. The advanced options that you can look at enable waiting room. That's where uh, the participants have to wait until you, the host, allow them to come in. So before we go on, let's talk about what a host is. So. When you are scheduling a deposition and you are using your Zoom account, you're creating the meeting ID, you're the host. Often when I'm taking depositions via Zoom with a defense lawyer scheduling it, they hire a videographer and that person is the host. So it's important to know who's a host, who's not a host, who's a participant, who's not a participant. In this situation, you are the host. So if you enable a waiting room, that means that you, the host, uh, have to accept and let everyone in as they join the meeting. I, I prefer not to do that because sometimes you're sitting there wondering, where is so-and-so? Why didn't they join this meeting? And then you forget, oh, yeah, I was supposed to let them in. So that's why I select enable join before host right here. I also mute participants upon entry because I think that that's just Good practice. You never know when someone's going to come on and say something that they shouldn't have. You always hope it's the opposing party, but uh, the time you're not you're not watching, it'll be your client. And then I don't automatically record meetings, although you should probably because it's so easy to forget to push record. I actually have little sticky notes that I put all around my monitors and everything when I'm doing a meeting to make sure that I remember to record. And if I take a break and I pause the recording, I put the sticky notes back up. So now that we have set up the meeting, we click schedule. It's going to go to my iCal. Let's just say home. And these are the meeting details. Everybody has a different calendar system, right? You can then copy these details command C and you can then open up a email paste the meeting details in there and send them to uh, your court reporter I use Lori Purdy on all of my court reporting stuff and I let her know that these are the meeting details and maybe I'll send it to opposing counsel as well. But I also uh, take these meeting details and I put them into a notice. So here's a mock-up notice that I did for the, the mock deposition that I did for this presentation. And <clears throat> you can see uh, to the defendant here, and I made up some information there. Of course, we're in wonderful Judge Pearson's court and county court at law number one, Tarrant County. But then I state the date. And of course, it's a different date now. Um, I can correct that in a little bit. But the most important thing is to make sure that you 
take all this information and put in the new information or put in the pertinent information for your case. I'll then go in and kind of clean up these extra spaces. So you see how we have this entire link right here. Go to the end of it here and hit enter. That way it makes that a actual usable hyperlink so people can access the meeting through that if they so choose. I also like to highlight or at least bold the important information here, which is the meeting ID and the password. You don't have to actually have a link. You can just enter the meeting ID and password to get into the Zoom deposition. So now that I've cleaned up the deposition notice and it's single space and it looks good and the link works, and uh, we've put in everything that we want. You'll also want to make sure that you state the location of the people that are going to be involved in the deposition. So that would be the deponent. This is Prince, and I put that uh, I believe that she's doing it from her place of residence and that she'll provide that specific location at the time of the deposition. The court reporter always does that. I always put the court reporter's location um, here. The court reporter was Alice McTyperton. And I think I made up, a, yeah, I obviously made up an address for her at 1234 Keyboard Lane. Um, I forget what the name of those things that they type on are called. And then I, use, I also put the name of the defendant's attorney as well. I state my location. Counsel for plaintiff will be at his home. And then I state that the deposition footage will be done via Zoom and it'll be recorded. And the rest is all form, you know, put in your certificate of service, certificate of conference if your jurisdiction requires it. That's pretty much it. That's your deposition notice. You can send it to opposing counsel via PDF. The link should still work if you do it correctly. And then, of course, you can just also send the link as well through this email. Because we know the meeting ID and the password, we could actually join the meeting. So we'll go to our meeting ID that we created for our deposition, copy that. Paste it in here, click join, it brings up this box along with uh, this selection, which I'll choose join with computer audio. And then because I uh, created the meeting, I didn't have to actually enter the password, but when I clicked join, if I would have been someone else, I would have needed to enter the password, which we had on the deposition notice. So once you're in the meeting, you could do a bunch of different things. For example, um, I want to look at who the participants are. Has anyone joined? I'll do that by clicking down there where it says participants. And you can see that only I have joined. The red camera with the line through it means that it's not showing my video in order to start showing my video, we will go down here and click start video. Now I'm appearing and anyone that joins the room will see me as well. I like to keep it as a stopped video until it's time to actually begin the deposition. And then also always be aware of whether you need to have your deposition muted or not. So be aware of the red microphone in the top right. And then what I focus on is down on the bottom left where it says Hutchison and Stoy. We can also send invites from this location. Uh, just about an hour ago, I had a deposition where the opposing counsel, for whatever reason, I don't know if they something got lost in the shuffle, they didn't have the invite. So that's super easy to do. Again, this will uh, you'll probably be seeing this screen at this point. And so you'll click on participants and you'll click invite and then copy the invitation. Okay, it's been copied and you can just draft another email to whoever it is that you're sending it to. And there, you got it. Quick and easy. I use iChat on my computer all the time. You can even 
uh, text the meeting invitation to someone. All right, so assume that we've got everyone lined up over here and, and the, meet, the deposition's ready to go. What first thing that you want to do, it's always super important, is make sure that you click the record. And I choose record to the cloud. You have to have that third version of, of Zoom to do this. And that, of course, it takes into consideration that you've entered the right settings for the cloud recording, which I discussed in a different video. But you always want to do that. And again, don't forget your little recording notes so that you don't forget to uh, make sure that you're recording to the cloud, the reason that you're doing all this. And then, of course, when you're ready to be seen and do the deposition, you click stop video. Well, yeah, start video at that point and then mute, unmute. You may also want to know how to change the name that appears on the bottom of the screen. Down there on the bottom, it says Hutchison and Stoy, and we have it defaulted to that because so many people use the HS account. But when I'm in a deposition, I want to make sure that I change it to my name. And to do that, I'll come up here to More and Rename, and then I can just change it to my name. And we're good to go. Again, you can always change your background by going to Preferences. And then Virtual Background. Something that I may have forgotten to talk about in an earlier video is that I choose this, I have a green screen. And here you can, of course, uh, choose your favorite array of Of choices for your zoom background. I highly recommend getting the green screen. It makes all the difference in the world. All right. Um, that's really all I can think about at this point. So appreciate you listening. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email address is cstoy at hsjustice.com and my Office phone number is 817-820-0100. And we have a YouTube channel, Warriors for Justice, with maybe under Hutchison and Stoy. You can check out some more tutorials there. I'll keep uploading stuff. I wish you were on the beach right now. That'd be a lot better than being in my room recording videos. But uh, hopefully soon after this pandemic lifts, we'll be able to do that. Thanks.